point. Mm -hmm. Just keep that out your way then. Yeah. Uh, that'll work. <laughs> you reading that? No. No, he's going to hold it for he's me. He's going to hold it for her. You might have to sign that. That'll work for you. Call this meeting of the Fremont County Board of Commissioners to order. Um, we don't have Todd loose here. Please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner McFall? Present. Commissioner Bell? Present. Commissioner Payne? Present. County Attorney Jackson? Present. County Manager Bryant? Present. Planning and Zoning Director Garrett? Present. Thank you. Move on to approval of agenda. Mr. Chair, I am not aware of any changes we need to make with today's agenda, so I move to approve. Second. Has been moved and seconded to approve the agenda. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Bell? Aye. Commissioner Payne? Aye. Commissioner McFall? Aye. <coughs> On to the consent agenda, I will note that we are scheduling a public hearing for April 9th for uh, amendments to the on site watershed or wastewater treatment system regulations. So we'll be at 10 o'clock on the 9th. With that, Mr. Chair, and that very exciting public hearing that will be on <laughs> April 9th, uh, moved that we approve the consent agenda. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded to approve consent agenda. Any further discussion? <coughs> Roll call, please. Commissioner Payne? Aye. Commissioner Bell? Aye. Commissioner McFall? Aye. Motion carries. All right, on to staff and elected official report. Um, we'll start with the county clerk's month report. Mr. John Justin Grant. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, total motor vehicle fees, sales tax, and recording fees collected for the month of February for 2019 is $978,485.66. Fremont County's portion for disbursement is $555,010.32, which is 57% uh, of the total fees and is $31,511.34 less than February of last year. Year to date, our office is down $107,011.47 from last year. Okay. So we've been talking um, for the last couple of years how that number had been rising every month and every year, and we kept saying prepare because it's not going to keep going up. So um, the last couple of months it's been down, and in my books it's been down significantly. But the numbers are what they are, and I guess we can't blame you personally. So, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair, I move to accept the clerk's monthly report. Second. Been moved and seconded to accept the clerk's monthly report. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Bell? Aye. Commissioner Payne? Aye. Commissioner McFall? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. On to County Manager, Sonny Bryant. <laughs> So just a couple of updates on some projects that we have. Um, tomorrow is the deadline for the bids for the Hayden Pass project, and so we're hopeful to actually receive a couple of bids this time so that we can award that and move forward with the construction on that project. On Thursday, March 14th, we have a kickoff meeting for the Brownfields Advisory Committee, and so we're excited to move forward with those and get some assessments done on some properties throughout the community. And then tomorrow, we actually also have a grant hearing for the underfunded courthouse, um, I'm sorry, for the DOLA part of the courthouse project. And so I'm 
happy to report that we don't have to drive to Golden tomorrow. According to the weather, it's probably not a great time to make that trek for a 20-minute grant presentation. So we will be able to present that from here. So we're hopeful to receive those funds so we can move forward with that project. That's all I have right now. Okay. Thank you, Sunny. Yeah, it's a good thing. I was watching the weather, and I don't know if any of you have seen it, but there's a huge storm coming tomorrow over Palmer Divide. And I told Sunny that they said the hours to not drive were between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., and that's exactly when we'd be going to Golden. So we'd either not get there or get stuck there, and I didn't want to do either. So it's a good thing. <laughs> okay, anyone else? I just would like to mention, Mr. Chair, last Friday, uh, both our county attorney, Brenda Jackson, and I had the opportunity to be involved with uh, presenting once again Fremont's Exceptional Women and we have 15 incredible amazing women there that we were honoring and celebrating again it was a sellout event things went really really well and um, just congratulations to all those women and I can't wait to see who our nominees are for next year because they just keep getting better and better so congratulations to all okay I just want to mention that uh, Commissioner Bell got elected to the uh, CCI Board of Directors. She has her first meeting this Thursday in Denver, and she will represent the Mountain District of CCI. And so congratulations to you. You get to go to your first meeting. Thank you. And I'll be at uh, CCI Colorado Counties Incorporated uh, Steering Committee meetings on Friday up in Denver. So uh, I, I'm on a chair of a land use steering committee up there, so I'll be up there on Friday. So anyway, lots to go on. With Providing the weather allows us yeah. to get there. <laughs> so Colorado County's uh, legislative group, and what it is is getting our voice in there for um, legislation that could possibly come in front of the government in Denver. So that's why I'm trying to keep up on all of that stuff. All right, anyone else? Okay, I do have one citizen um, who wishes to speak. If anybody else would like to speak, we do have some slips up here. Feel free to fill one out. This one here is Mr. Bob Dewey. Caught him off guard, I think. Yeah, caught him off guard. I'm still writing. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, morning. Commissioner. Good morning, Bob. Uh, today I come before you as a as a concerned citizen. First, I would like to commend your action in declaring Fremont County as a Second Amendment sanctuary county, and to see like a, a lot of other counties have uh, followed suit. Uh, last week, the Fremont County Crusader published my article on House Bill 191177, the Extreme Risk Protection Order, and it outlines just how terrible the red flag bill is as it is written and how it takes away our individual rights. Again, I commend your action and your stance against the red flag bill. I have a few concerns, though. That's what I was writing on. The red flag bill is very explicit about how the protection order will be issued and once issued the procedures that the sheriff's department or the agency that will be handling the petition and those directions will come directly from the state following the bill. My concern is one what if the petition is correct and we do have a person that is mentally ill, what are we gonna do about it? And second, in our stance as the bill that we just passed declaring the county as a Second Amendment protection uh, county or sanctuary county, what are the procedures that we're going to do not to enforce the petition once it's issued by the court? That's my two questions. So we'll support the sheriff's decision on how he's going to handle that. Um, the first one is um, there is something already in place to take care of those people that are mentally, um, have mental problems. That is already, the M1 holds, those are already in place and they can utilize them today. I agree, they are. And I just want to make sure that the enforcement, and they are listed in the narrative of the red flag bill of exactly how they should be handled. But I wanted to e express my support for your stance as the, uh, taken against the red flag bill as a sanctuary county. And again, thank you for your actions. Thank you. Thanks, thank Paul. you. 
Okay. Seeing no one else, we will move on. There is no old business. So we will move on to new business. The first order of new business is recognition of Dave Stephenson for his years of service to Fremont County. Dave, would you come on up to the podium? We're going to have Commissioner Bell. Good morning. Read a resolution. Good morning. Good Thanks morning. Thanks for being here. Thank all you guys for being here. We understand that you are just a little bit publicly shy, so I just want to say thank you for coming because this means a lot to us okay. to be able to acknowledge and appreciate the workers of Fremont County. So, whereas the Board of County Commissioners of Fremont County, Colorado, regretfully accepts the retirement of Mr. David Stephenson as Fremont County Department of Transportation Equipment Operator, and whereas David Stephenson has been a loyal and valued employee of Fremont County from July 13, 1992, until March 14 of 2019, earning much respect and admiration for his extraordinary level of dedication and skills in operating equipment for the county. And whereas David Stephenson provided Fremont County and its citizens with his expertise in road maintenance for over 26 years. And whereas David Stephenson's accomplishments are many and include the following, performing equipment operation to maintain county roads, operating equipment at a high level above most with expert skills, operating equipment to overlay county roads with asphalt or chip seal materials, providing leadership and knowledge through example of character and skills to those who are subordinate, and for being a valuable senior operator and a relied upon leader in projects. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of County Commissioners of Fremont County, Colorado, hereby publicly recognizes and expresses its deep appreciation and that of the residents of Fremont County to David Stephenson for his decades of devoted service to Fremont County and its citizens. And be it further resolved that this resolution shall be read into the record of the Board of County Commissioners as a tribute to David Stephenson's service and that the official seal of Fremont County shall be affixed thereto and delivered to him. And with that, Mr. Chair, I move to approve this resolution. Second. It has been moved and um, seconded to approve this resolution. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Congratulations. We're going to take the picture. Again, thanks to all of our, your co-workers for being here. Um, we did this a couple weeks ago. We lost a pretty good hand to retirement, and he's here today, too. We're losing another one, so I appreciate what you guys do, and thanks for being here today. We try not to make these too painful for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> On to number two, we have a Fremont County Tourism Council annual report. We have Mr. Steve Kaverman, who's the chairman of the Fremont County Tourism Council. You guys want to save for this. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, they have work to do. <laughs> well, all my money tourism brings in, the roads would go to heck, though. It really would. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Can we bring that up as a slideshow? Oh, there you go. Perfect. Thank you very much. So who do I signal when I need the slide change? Just <laughs> cue Sonny. Okay. All right, great. Well, there's our title slide. Our new logo, that was rolled, the logo, uh, report on this logo in 2018, because we rolled this out in 2017. Um, it's not even in the report, but I'll tell you real quickly, one of the things we're doing right now, we're in the process of 
We've just developed a style guide for the use of that logo so everyone understands how to use it. It doesn't get stretched, doesn't get squished. You don't do this to the colors and all that kind of thing. And we are releasing that now to operators and, and uh, tourism related businesses, really any business that wants to use it to co-brand their business. Um, Unbridled is already using it on their marketing communication materials. Um, it's been sent out to several others that we're interested in as well. And, and the goal is to be able to co-brand virtually any tourism related business in the county with that brand so that people begin to look at this entire region as one big place instead of just this event, that event, one activity or another. So thanks for that. So uh, this is uh, just kind of a quick summary of um, where the money went last year. We originally budgeted 185000 for lodging tax revenue. We uh, collected a little bit more than that. Uh, up slightly over 2017, almost a 3% increase. Um, again, last year we were fortunate to get a couple of grants, um, one from the uh, College Tourism Office, which is a matching grant, um, the other $75,000 from the Office of Economic Development and International Trade was a, was a grant we did not need to match. So as you can see, those two together make up fully a third of our budget. Um, last year was the fifth consecutive year. This is the sixth consecutive year the Fremont County Tourism Council has received the $25,000 grant from the CTO. Uh, a lot of the credit for those grants and that kind of revenue to the county uh, and to our efforts on the Tourism Council uh, goes to Brian Jordan and VistaWorks. Brian writes those grants and the grants that he writes specifically for the uh, CTO grant has really been held up as kind of a model for others in the state that are trying to, that are competing for that grant and it is a competition and not everyone that applies for it gets the award. So our kudos, kudos to Brian and VistaWorks for, for their effort on that. So that gave us a total fund last year of almost $330,000. Um, and uh, we underspent slightly, so we did finish the year with a surplus of uh, just over $43,000 and had a little bit of a cushion going into 2019. I love that shot of the bridge, just had to throw that in there. So what does this mean in terms of economic impact for the area? If you just do the math, $235,905 in lodging tax revenue at 2% equates to almost $12 million in lodging sales, lodging revenue. Now, clearly the tourism, you know, tourism doesn't account for all of that. There's people that come here and stay in our lodges and hotels and places for other reasons as well. But um, certainly a big percentage of that is due to tourism. and. That is obviously a very substantial indicator of what kind of an economic driver this is for the region. Uh, broader, looking more broadly, this is a picture uh, or an, uh, a table showing the economic impact on Fremont County. This comes from the state of Colorado. This is, rev this is uh, research that's conducted annually for the Colorado Tourism Office by Dean Runyon and Associates. These are 2017 numbers, 2018 numbers will be available in June or so. But these are all up, as you can see. Um, travel spending, this is a county number, $6.2 million. Uh, and 11, again, 11, almost 12 million of that just in lodging spending. And everybody that comes and stays in a hotel, I would have a hunch or make a bet that they're going to spend a little more money while they're here in the county on an activity, on gas, on food. You know, maybe not car maintenance, hopefully not car <laughs> maintenance, but some probably do. Uh, so. That's a substantial amount of spending. Uh, over a million and a half dollars in earnings, that's, that's a representation really of just uh, wages, salaries and wages paid to individuals in the county working in tourism. Uh, jobs up a little bit. These are full-time equivalents that they're showing here. These, so this does not represent all the part-time uh, people that, you know, they all total to a full-time equivalent ultimately, but, you know, <laughs> Nobody that has one of those full-time jobs that means so much to them three or four days a week or is working seasonally, you know, really counts it that way. To them, it is their job and it's really important to them. Um, lodging tax or total state and local taxes shown there. Um, one of the things that I included uh, in my written report that I wanted to repeat for everyone here today and listening, um, we sometimes, uh, 
face some skeptics about lodging tax and, and um, what that really means. And this is a source of revenue for pretty much every destination marketing organization in the state. It's just kind of how, well, not just the state, but in the nation. It's kind of how they operate. It, it's, either, it's either lodging tax revenue or some kind of tax on rental car um, agreements and that sort of thing. But for every Coloradan in Colorado last year, were it not for lodging or were it not for the money coming in from tourism, everyone in this room, everyone listening, everybody in the state, every man, woman, and child would be responsible for another $228 in taxes. Every one of Colorado's 5.6 million citizens, residents. So if you think tourism is insignificant or we shouldn't bother promoting it in this county, you're mistaken. And it's a great return on investment and uh, that certainly is a very key indicator. Um, we, of course, have, uh, like most other organizations, relied more and more heavily on social media for outreach. Uh, print has not died. There were some people that, you know, predicted that when the internet started to grow, but that certainly hasn't happened. Um, but Facebook, um, we still reach a substantial number of people. This number is actually down slightly from 2017, if you were comparing the two reports really just due to some of the Facebook rule changes and algorithm changes and things like that. Nothing we can really control. But uh, so over a half a million people reached. That means people that actually interacted with us. Impressions is a measurement of just how many people saw our name, saw the Royal Gorge region, saw Fremont County, saw something in the county that they you know, recognized and were exposed to the idea of coming here. Uh, the big number here that's important is, of course, engagements. These are things that, uh, where people actually took some action to click on that little like thing, you know, put a little smiley face on the post or whatever, um, to share it with somebody, which is the ultimate compliment in social media, um, or to leave a compliment uh, or a comment on, the, on those. Here's the real thing I want to point out again, too, here, the acquisition cost. That is, what does it cost us to reach those half a million people? or to leave those 1.4 million impressions. So just a little over a penny per person. It's a real bargain. So Google, same deal. Uh, we actually um, do some very strategic things with Google. We know a lot about where our interest is coming from with Google. We can make some very informed decisions, much more so than somebody, frankly, picking up one of our visitor guides out of a rack. We know they're gone, but we don't really know who took it. We don't really know much about that person. With Google, we can know quite a bit about them. We can know down to their zip code, where that particular individual is coming from and things. So we've got some really good data behind all of this as well. Again, look at this number at the bottom here with total impressions of over 17 million, almost 18 million people and an acquisition cost here of um, just almost three cents per person, but still just a really very, very effective way of, of getting word out about Fremont County and about the Royal Gorge region. Website traffic, um, our website actually is um, linked um, to a number of others and links from a number of others but uh, 170,000 visitors to our website last year, uh, viewing twice as many pages, and that generated 1,405 requests for our visitor guide. That's not the total number of visitor guides we had requests for. Those are just the ones coming directly from rogorgeregion.com, and <clears throat> those are very well-qualified leads, as we call them in the industry. Those are people that clearly have an interest in coming here and, um, and request a guide online. And you can also download our visitor guide online or view it, view it sort of digitally, just flipping through the pages on our website as well. So you don't need to actually request a printed copy. Other digital marketing channels, um, CTO, social media co-ops. This is a, another great way of our partnering with the Colorado Tourism Office for every thousand dollars we spend on these social media co-ops, they match with another thousand dollars. That's over and above the twenty-five thousand dollar grant that they we, that we receive from the CTO. Um, and then we do a couple of, you know, we do, we do several, but there's this two featuring here uh, specific re, uh, promotions that we do on social media, uh, reaching out with specific stories. Here, one about river trips with kids. 
another about biking, which has been very popular and growing. We're getting a lot of social media buzz on a number of different channels about our growing mic mountain biking and uh, trail system and things. But you can see the numbers here, very impressive results there on our other uh, outreach through other digital marketing channels as well. This one's kind of cool. You can see the, the uh, big electronic sign right down there on the corner of 16th and Champa on the 16th Street Mall in Denver. This was uh, something that was made possible by our grant from OEdit. It's not something we could afford on $300,000 a year. And the normal budget that we have, uh, without the grant money, we wouldn't be able to do things like that. But it's neat. To, I actually stood down there one afternoon, watched people standing there watching. They weren't staring at the logo. They were staring at the video. Because behind the logo was video of people mountain biking and rock climbing and going over the bridge on the zip line and all that kind of stuff. And that's, that's very engaging. But again, you can see the long list of social media channels here and other things that we use to reach out through Colorado.com, uh, through Colorado Springs. Uh, Visit Colorado Springs, another very important partner of ours. The region was rebranded last year as the Pikes Peak Wonders. So we are now part of Pikes Peak Wonders region. Uh, the state travel regions previously had been decided upon based on geographical boundaries that meant absolutely nothing to visitors. They were, I mean, nobody even really had any idea how they'd been developed. The state went through an exhaustive effort of research and, and community listening sessions and, and came up with these new uh, travel regions and we're part of Pikes Peak Wonders now, Sonny. Email, again, uh, another big outreach effort. Um, we have 83, almost 84,000 opt-in subscribers. Um, that is another rule of social media that's changed quite a bit over the last few years. You, you know, spam, no one likes to get spammed, so we're not spamming anybody. These are 84,000 people that have specifically requested to receive our newsletter. Very important distinction. Our visitor guide, um, again, print is definitely not dead. This is a very popular way of, of spreading information about the region. We printed 100,000 of them last year. By the end of 2018, thankfully, they were all gone. That's always quite an effort to get rid of the entire inventory. We don't want them sitting around at the end of the year. But direct fulfillment of almost 10,000 of those, those, again, are people that specifically requested a copy be mailed to them. Um, and again, this year, we will be mailing copies to every individual that requests them, whether it's from Vermont or Washington or Louisiana. We'll mail them a copy if they make the request. That's not always been possible because of budget restrictions. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce is our de facto office because we don't have any full-time staff. We don't really have an office. They answer the phone. They answer walk-in inquiries. They staff the... the, the uh, cabin at the visitor center, uh, or not visit, excuse me, but in Centennial Park. And all of those statistics you see there are people that reach us through the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, they're also the local repository for our visitor guide. So any business or anybody locally that you know of that's looking for visitor guides, they've got cases of them at the chamber, and you can get cases of them there at the chamber. 75 to a box. Love to have you go by and pick up a copy. So. That's it. I'd be happy to answer any questions over the other seven pages of the report that um, I didn't include in the PowerPoint program. And I would also like to recognize uh, the Fremont County Tourism Council Board. Um, Heidi, Heidi Anderson served for a short time this year to fulfill Kristen Economy's appointment uh, after Kristen resigned uh, to go back to teaching. Uh, Peggy Gare with the Royal Gorge Bridge and Park. Blaine Heckert with the Quality Inn and Suites. Larry Hill with Starlight Campground, Beth Katchmer, who you all know with uh, Pizza Madness, Beyond Madness Catering, um, myself and John Miller with Willie's Antiques, one of the big tour, uh, antique shops in Florence. They all work very hard. They are all volunteers. Um, something I'd encourage the commissioners to consider is perhaps including not only Fremont County Tourism Council volunteers, but all the volunteers that serve on county boards and commissions and in other capacities to assist the county in your employee recognition picnic that you hold annually. It'd be a nice way to just include them and invite them to come by and, and receive a little recognition for the work that they do because collectively what they represent in terms of a monetary benefit to this county I'm sure runs into the millions of dollars. Again, thank you for your time. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Steve.
appreciate it. I would just like for you to mention um, when your meetings are and where they are held um, because they're, they're open to the public. Anyone who is interested can come and listen to what you guys are doing. So they're secret meetings. Oh, yeah, don't even, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, our meetings don't are, even go there. Our meetings are held every, Tuesday, every first Tuesday of the month. They're generally in room 207, which is upstairs in this building uh, at 8 a.m. in the morning. Uh, they are publicly announced a week in advance. We post those online on the county website as well as a couple of other locations here in the county building. And you can contact any one of the officers, of course, for details about any of that. So Steve, I think, it, I think you're absolutely right. It is important to recognize all the volunteers. We have several boards that we have volunteer folks on. Sure. And, and you guys are a group of seven. Um, you mentioned some, we do have a new addition because of the um, Heidi stepping back, so we have Ashley Sack, who's on the board this year, right. and then the rest of them remain the same, but um, volunteer groups do do a, a wonderful job um, with all that they do on serving the boards, and we appreciate that, and thank you for being here today, too. Yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, on to the next one. I guess this is, this is our turn. It is our <laughs> the turn. The Fremont County, the 2018 Accountability Report. Um, Ours is just a little bit longer than Steve's. We've got about 62 pages, so we've broken this up a little bit. And um, we're gonna start with Commissioner Bell on the first part of this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. A uh, couple of comments I would like to make first. This is already, believe it or not, Fremont County's sixth annual accountability report. And I think we're all really proud of that. Um, we realized back in about 2012, 2013, maybe there were some different ways that we could reach um, our constituents, all of the citizens of Fremont County, and it's, it's our desire to simply let you all know what it is that we do with all those tax dollars that you give us every year. So this is our attempt at that. Also wanted to mention that um, here's a list of our elected officials. I know some of them have changed, um, but I wanted to, especially on this page, give a shout out to Kathy Elliott, our treasurer and public trustee, because we always offer and ask all of our elected officials to participate in this report. This year, Kathy was the only one to give us information on her office, so she's the only one that's included in this report. I think you recognize those three mugs. Not sure about that. Enough said. <laughs> so one of the most fun things that we get to do every year is we have the opportunity to recognize an employee of the year. This year we had, um, I think, 11 different folks nominated for that. We had one who was selected not just by the county commissioners, but by all elected officials. So I want to make sure that you understand that distinction. And our selection this year was John Grayson. He is an um, IT technician here in Fremont County. He does a great job. We were very happy to recognize him for that. And then Sunny Bryant was quite surprised. You may be able to tell by the look on her face right here. <laughs> In our uh, Colorado Counties Incorporated Winter Conference in Colorado Springs held the end of November into the first part of December, we nominated her and she actually was chosen, no surprise to any of us, but a huge shock to her as the Association of Colorado County Administrator of the Year. So once again, congratulations, Sunny. Very well deserved. <laughs> So this is kind of hard to read. We are uh, not going to go into all of these numbers. It simply is our adopted budget for 2018 with a summary of all of our funds. And that reminds me to let you all know this will be available online. And you can take a look at this up close and can uh, digest all those numbers. Take a look at them and uh, it will be available at FremontCO.com. Some of our accomplishments this year, we worked hard to complete the first phase of the administration building roof replacement. I think they had to scrape off seven or eight old layers of roof. Since this building was built over 50 years ago, we're pretty sure this was the first time that a roof was actually replaced and not just refinished. So there was a lot of old stuff up there to get rid of. And it's, um, as you can see, that was the first phase. Those phases will be continuing until we have the entire building here done. Through a lot of hard work, by Commissioner McFall and uh, also County Manager Sonny Bryant. The county did secure $3.5 million for bank stabilization up in the Hayden Pass area. This is because of the Hayden Pass burn scar that's up there. We had some terrible severe rains a year ago that caused a lot of flooding. We lost at least one house up there. So this project is intended to stabilize all of that and to help channel those waters instead of let them continue to wash away houses and roads. 
We also secured a $600,000 three-year fund from the Environmental Protection Agency to use to assess brownfield sites here in Fremont County. So we've talked a couple of times about that. Our first community board meeting is tomorrow. We also uh, did secure a $200,000 grant to be used toward finishing space in the judicial building. This would add an additional courtroom for an additional judge that we believe will be coming here to uh, Fremont County within the next couple of years. So other things that we did, we were able to get a grant to put a shade structure over the uh, what we call the Penny Project out at the War Memorial Park. If you've never been out there to see it, it's very cool. I would urge you all to stop by and take a look. It's much more welcoming now also as we completed a landscaping project out at that park at the airport and there still is other work ongoing. Um, we helped to fund recycling events last year and collected almost 32,000 pounds of electronics. We also participate in a regional housing study with other counties through um, Upper Arkansas Area Council of Governments to tell us exactly what kind of housing is needed here in Fremont County. We all know that we do face a housing shortage right now, so this was to tell us as well as investors and builders what kind of housing we need here. Fremont County Airport had another successful year with Dick Baker as our manager. We supported uh, seed operations, which is single engine air tanker, I believe, is that correct? Uh, in 17 different wildfires. So we started the season out with nine tankers, which was the most ever in one place. Uh, they flew actually 232 sorties or flights and delivered over 150,000 gallons of retardant, which was a base record for Fremont County. Some of the maintenance things that happened here in 2018 completed the runway maintenance, crack fill, fog seal, runway remarking, installed new runway lights. 90% of the funds for those projects was contributed by the um, FAA. The state of Colorado contributed another 5% and Fremont County contributed another, another 5%. Facility maintenance, uh, there was some work done inside to make the, the interior a little bit more warm and welcoming. Painted the office interior and installed new cabinets and countertops, as you can see there. We also installed a new concrete floor and apron in Hangar 16. Added some improvements out there to deter some of the birds and that did increase the rental value for the county. So we move next to Fremont County Building Department with Mike Cox as building official for Fremont County. So here again we have lots of figures you can see by looking at the chart there that um, we had 806 building permits issued which is up 18% from 2017. 76 of those were new single family stick framed dwellings and you can take a look again at all those numbers online. We have two building inspectors who performed 1,934 inspections this year with over 35,000 miles of travel. That was an increase again from last year. Our Board of Appeals had no appeals filed and yet the board still met three separate times for their mandatory meeting. And we had to issue this year four stop work orders, two which resulted in permits that were issued and other plan reviews and uh, we also license 145 general and 128 specific trade contractors. Here's the budget for the building department. The approved budget in 2018 was $251,521. Um, as of January 17th, the department expenditures for the year were over 275 which left a minor deficit of $23,000. Um, this was basically the addition of staff that we had not counted on in July. Uh, but the, two, the total generated in the building department was $342,759. Up next, CSU Extension. Uh, most folks know that Fremont County does have a, a wonderful 4-H project and program. Um, we have a newer director there, Jeremy McNeely is here now. Um, so in last year, 4-H had 292 kids in clubs who completed 519 different projects, as well as 1,894 youth completing school enrichments projects. We also had 121 adult volunteers. Believe me, we couldn't do it without those volunteers. 
In the 2018 Fremont County Fair in the open division for adults and youth, we had 156 participate with a total of 686 entries. And the 4-H division, uh, we had 251 youth with 1,106 entries. You can see some of those really cute pictures right there. Kids and their animals, it's, it's a pretty, uh, it's a great time out there until it comes time for the livestock sale. <laughs> and then it turns very emotional. So here's the livestock sale. We had 89 market lots sold for a record high of $144,499.63. By 57 buyers. CSU also participates in a master gardeners program. We have seven master gardeners here in Fremont County who donated 411 volunteer hours at a total of almost $9,000 um, value last year. They had 555 individual contacts. All right, I'm going to go ahead and allow Commissioner McFall to take over from here. Thanks for allowing me. <laughs> okay. You know, I could keep talking. You all know me. <laughs> I know. Uh, so the next is the Fremont County Department of Human Services, headed up by Stacy Quiddick Russell. Um, this department right here, that first picture, um, was the Living Blue Ribbon. It's the third annual that they've done that, and that's for uh, Child Abuse Child Abuse Prevention Month, which is in April every year. So. It was kind of cool. I guess this year there was a drone and a little bit of wind that made that kind of interesting. So, <laughs> see what happens this year. Outreach efforts. Um, there's always um, great outreach. There's early childhood STEM fair. There's fairy tale night at uh, Children's Star Point Services. Um, this year was highlighted uh, child abuse prevention and awareness year round by attending and having booths at several different community um, events. Back to school. My chip pages don't turn as easy as your. <laughs> that one does. So several schools throughout the county have invited um, um, DHS to participate in their back to school events, and they provide information about all the programs out of DHS. They've had booths at the local national night out events and take back the night. Um, it's it's pretty great events that they attend there. Community partnerships. Um, this year they enjoyed great community partnerships and you can see the um, partnerships there listed in the middle. Um, a lot of, lot of activities going on through DHS. They've been able to give back to the community as well. They sponsored several rooms um, for safety items at the Journey Home when it opened. Monthly lunch and learns to provide the best practices for court teams. They partnered with Pharisee Boys um, to help get kinship providers a new van and supported a, and established a new uh, child advocacy center, which is Kinder Kids. Recruitment and retention and foster and kinship families, it's very important to um, engage and uh, let them know how much appreciated they are. So here's what they do to, to recognize and, and keep people around for foster parents, which they're always looking for. Agency-wide retention also, um, Recruitment and retention of staff. It's important to keep your staff engaged and let them know that you care about them So they hold several events throughout the year to let them know that they are that they are appreciated Training they do a lot of training at DHS um, They send people out for training who then come back and do internal training and it's Constantly learning and training with each other and it's it's a very good situation out there. Next, we have the Department of Transportation. Half of them were here just a little bit ago, but uh, Tony Ademick, he's heads up the Department of Transportation. And there you can see the summary of, of the work that was done last year, um, from asphalt to chip seal, the uh, dust suppressant, cattle guards that were replaced, culverts. Um, interestingly enough, the, the bottom there, the public relations, um, they were contacted by 159 citizens 115 work orders were completed. There's 41 open work orders, three dismissed, and there were 12 thanks. I think we get a lot, uh, they get a lot of people complaining to them, but very few giving them thanks after something's completed. So those guys do, do deserve a lot of thanks for what they do do. Uh, water resources, water is very important for the work that they do on the road um, crew, um, from paving to um, grading all the roads. You see they've used a little over 8 million gallons of water 
which comes from various parts of the county, depending on where they're working. But water is necessary for grading and blading of all the county roads, as well as maintaining and maintenance and other project, um, such as cleaning culverts. Got to push that dirt out of there somehow. Just to, just to add on that real quick, uh, we just don't go take water. We that right. we had an augmentation plan, and <laughs> and so it's all it's all good to go. It's all legal. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, Emergency summary, um, they do see uh, Department of Transportation helps when they have like the Chateau fire that they had up in Teller County this last year, um, help the Sheriff's Department um, with assisting in emergencies and signing Pathfinder Park, they perform regular maintenance. We have the, all the parks actually, they've helped uh, perform regular maintenance. Helped out at the airport for erosion maintenance. We had some of those big rains last year that people felt in their homes, but we also had that in some of the county properties. So. They help fix those. Um, clearing out the WPA, which is a huge drainage that runs from north of town to the river. Um, try to get the storm waters out of there. So they're con continually, in fact, this year, continue cleaning the WP out to keep the water flowing. And then we had a grant funding to um, reconstruct the front of the tunnel at Phantom Canyon. They were starting to chip away in a road and we had two options, fix the tunnel or close the road. And um, we were able to get a grant and got the road and there's pictures up there in the bottom right corner. Um, so it's going to keep that a viable tunnel for years to come. This is pretty interesting. The fleet services, 862 days without time lost due to injury. That's pretty amazing. That's a long time. Um, the vehicle upgrades, vehicles added, um, where they've disposed of vehicles and insurance claims. The rodeo, I'm glad they all left. See, now I can brag. I, I jumped in on the rodeo with those these guys last year and ran a couple of pieces of equipment. And I'm going to say I beat them all because they're not here to defend their stuff. I really did. But he'd but. be lying. <laughs> <laughs> Since they're not here. <laughs> I did, however, beat some of them, which was kind of cool. But anyway, um, they had 25 participants. It's not just um, our county. There's people from the city other, and uh, adjoining counties come and participate in this. And it um, happens right there, right around fair time. It's out at Pathfinder Park. It's pretty fun to watch these guys operate and see what kind of hands they really are on the equipment. Next, we have the uh, Fremont County Emergency Management, uh, Michael Kroll. He is a new director over there. Um, he's doing a great job working on um, updating plans. Um, he, here's some of the stuff that he, they, the emergency management was involved in last year from multiple search and rescue missions. Um, communication drills with partners, um, having good uh, communication with partners, uh, stakeholders with fire departments, um, adjoining counties, everything else is very important. He's doing a good job of that. Responding to multiple flooding events in Coaldale, as we all know that in July we had a lot of problems everywhere, which has been referred to already. Um, com completed development of community wildfire protection plans in the Chandler Heights area of Williamsburg, and they signed off on a community wildfire protection plan in Indian Springs. These are protection plans where there may not be um, any fire protection. They can come to the county. We have money available to help um, create fire protection plans from wildfires, so it's pretty important. Um, approximately, or uh, provide National Weather Service spotter training for flood prone areas. So there's a lot that the emergency manager does um, throughout the county, and we'll pass it on to Commissioner Bain. Thank you. Uh, we go on to Fremont County uh, Planning and Zoning with Sean Garrett, the director. Sean's here up here, and I told him that he can jump in and give some insight to this that I may not know at any point in time. In other words, bail me out. <laughs> so the code enforcement, uh, uh, attorney uh, Jackson and I go once a month to a code enforcement meeting, and we get updates on what they're doing and, and um, if they have to be taken to another step or... Uh, most of the time, the guys take care of it pretty good. Uh, we have uh, Robert Sapp and Fred Gifford, as, and we also have a new one. Yes, Daniel Victoria. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they take care of a lot of that. Um, then we go into uh, addressing. Uh, whenever there's a change of addresses and new addresses need to be done, that goes through this department, and you can see the number ones, the, the number is up there that they took care of on addresses. And then inspections on as far as uh, uh, medical marijuana, can, I mean, they do all this kind of stuff, conditional use permits, home occupations for home businesses. So you see the numbers there of what they took care of on, on the permits and the inspections. 
then we get into uh, land use violations, zoning violations, and what they have to go out to, and the number of cases that they uh, they deal with here uh, on a daily basis. And uh, we keep them pretty busy, that's for sure. Then we go into marijuana violations. Uh, you can see they're down from 2017, 33, down to 21. Uh, always like to see that number keep going down. Uh, that's always a good thing. And there's a summary on the uh, <clears throat> where the violations and 100% um, of the marijuana related cases are closed. That's always a good thing. Helping hands, uh, this is always a great uh, pr uh, thing that we have going on with these guys. I know uh, Sean, he's taken time on his own time, days off, and helped out with these helping hands. And you can see before and after pictures here of, of uh, the helping hands. We, we actually get uh, dumpsters out there uh, that uh, through the helping hands that uh, we pay for. To, and they have to be pretty extreme uh, cases for us to get get this done but uh, you can see what uh, the progress we've made on that this is some more of the before and after on the helping hands cleanup and uh, how many did we have Sean did do you remember I'd have to relook and I don't yeah the total. I just thought maybe you had that number off the top you sorry put you on the spot there and here's the cost on that uh, the cleanup costs on the helping hands um, Total cost thirteen thousand and eighty dollars, but uh, you can see the amount of amount of cleanup that got done, and uh, it was pretty significant for throughout Fremont County. And I would like to point out, it's actually tipping fees at the dump that helps pay that, right. that those projects. It's not taxpayer money that's going towards those. That's correct. Yeah, tipping fees, which which is uh, what the uh, trash hauling companies collect uh, when they take stuff okay. to the dump. Or the landfill, I should say, to be correct. And on the public health and environment, Emma Davis is the director. She, she does a fantastic job. And uh, we, uh, you can see some of the programs here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you can read them and uh, what she's going to do. Uh, the communities that care, I think we actually have something down here, but uh, Commissioner Bell and, and uh, Sonny Bryant put a lot of time into the communities that care. And then we put, she puts a lot of time into the tobacco-free program, too, and cessation. Uh, got some grants here, maternal health grant. And then uh, uh, a, lot of, a lot of what she does is, is funded by grants. And that's what makes her job tough, is these funding sources come in at different times of the year. And so for budgeting, her and Sonny are always working on the budget. And, and because of these funding sources come in at different times, it's, it can get pretty complex. This is some of their minimization programs. Uh, you can see what they uh, went through. Once again, I'm not gonna read all that. You guys can read for yourself. And then our environmental uh, Sid Darden retired uh, in July, and then Amy Jamison was hired, and so they kind of split the year of 2018 on this, but you can kind of see up everything, 256 inspections, 13 complaints, and then the follow-ups. They do school inspections, uh, child care inspections. Uh, we keep them pretty busy on that kind of stuff. And, the, you know, as far as, like, parades and the food vendors, and uh, like I say, we keep, uh, we keep the... the keep that department pretty busy once again back onto the public health uh, some of the revenues that uh, I was talking about that she hired um, did some uh, contracts with and then uh, the uh, some of the stories that Sid would come up with on the bats and the cats and the skunks were pretty entertaining when we have our public health meetings and and uh, we always kind of look forward to those he was sending off bad heads or something to skunk heads and off to the state. And he always had interesting stories to go with those, how he got them. And, <laughs> and then we have the uh, communicable diseases and emergency preparedness and that, that they work on uh, also through public health. 
And again, here's the communities that care that I was talking about. Uh, Commissioner Bell and, and uh, Sonny Bryant put a lot of time into this, um, trying to get this going. And uh, so kudos to them for the time and effort they put into that. And then our vital records. Uh, we also have the vital records with birth and death certificates and, and uh, that type of stuff. And then we have a, a 2019 to 2023 public health uh, improvement plan and the top three priorities in Fremont County, behavioral health, which is the mental health, substance abuse, tobacco, the smoking cessation that I talked about, and then chronic disease, um, which is, uh, as you can see, which I have one of those, the heart disease. Oh. Then we move on to our uh, county treasurer, public trustee, as Commissioner Bell pointed out, she gave a report on this, um, the tax collections and the tax lien sales that she put, you can see all the, they keep, they stay pretty busy on all that kind of stuff. Uh, public trustee on foreclosures, uh, down to 74 um, on the foreclosures. You know, even back in the recession years of 2009, 2010 was up over 300, 365 for 2009 and 337 on 2010, and it's slowly gone down from that point. Uh, 2016 was 110, now we're down to 74. So I think that's a good reflection on the economy that uh, these foreclosures are going in the right direction. We move into our weed management. Uh, this is the noxious weeds. Uh, Nick Bankston is the director, he gave us a report so two weeks ago or a month ago on this? Yeah. And so he talks about these uh, A-list species that he has to deal with. Uh, and uh, he does a great job. And uh, his predecessor, Jana, she did a great job on this. And uh, they're pretty, pretty busy all summer doing a lot of weed spray. And as you can see, the total acres uh, that they did was 295. And they, uh, that keeps them pretty busy all summer into the fall uh, spraying the noxious weeds and keeping on top of that. So that, uh, I kind of busted through that. But Last year was a little different because it was kind of droughty, but we're yeah. getting some moisture this year, so the weeds are going to thrive, I think. There we go. Noxious or otherwise. So, Mr. Chair, one more comment that I would like to make um, is this was my grand idea a few years ago. So for the first four years, I was the one who had the opportunity to gather all of this information, to collect it, to collate it, to try to put it into readable format so folks could actually take a look and understand what it meant. And it took weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, I just would like to say a huge shout out and a big thank you to our HR director, Tammy Childs. She's the one who put all of this together um, in this format for us this year. And it, I think it has gotten a little bit easier over the years because we have the format now. We all have everyone trained to know what information we're looking for. But it still is not an easy task. So big thank you to Tammy. And also, I just would like to once again say thank you to all of our department heads um, and to our treasurer, Kathy Elliott, for gathering and putting all of this information together for us. I think it's very important for our constituents. So thank you. Oh yeah, that first year that uh, Commissioner Bell had this uh, brainstorm that let's do an accountability report and more than once she said, what did I get myself Pretty into? Pretty much. <laughs> and for those of you that enjoyed that so much, we are doing this again at the Senior Mini College <laughs> out at PCC on the 19th from 9 to 10, 15. So come on out and you can hear it again. It's good stuff. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now we will move on to number four, which is a resolution, which will be resolution number 13, adopting the March 2019 edition of Fremont County Personnel Policies and Procedure Managers Manual. This has um, been updated. There was some um, stuff and in, information in there that needed to be updated. It hadn't been since, I think, 2010, if I remember right. And this has been signed off by all the other elected officials so far. And so we have that. Yeah. Nobody else going to say anything on this. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we approve resolution number 13, adopting the March 2019 edition of the Fremont County Personnel Policies and Procedures Manual. 
I will second that along with just a note that it's taken us a long time to get this where we wanted it to be. We've known for a couple of years we had some changes that we would like to have seen. It took us a while not only to organize us and our thoughts, but to um, you know, work with HR, to work with our county attorney, to work with our county manager, but also to work then with our other elected officials and our department heads to get everyone's buy-ins on all of these. Um, because we try very hard to not run a dictatorship in Fremont County. Um, so we really do appreciate the time and effort that everyone else has spent with this as well. Okay, so it has been moved and seconded to approve resolution number 13, adopting the March 2019 edition of Fremont County Personnel Policy and Procedure Manual. Any other discussion? I would just like to say that this manual rescinds all previous versions. If uh, approved today, roll call, please. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. On to number five, resolution number 14, which is appropriating additional sums of money to defray expenses in, ex in ex excess of amounts budgeted for the appropriated by Fremont County, Colorado, my goodness, for the budget year ending December 31st, 2018. I will turn to Sonny Bryant. Yes, so this is a item that we do, an item that we do each year. Um, at the closeout of the year, we go back and see what was originally budgeted in each of our funds and then determine if we need to do a supplemental budget. So what you have before you are the essentially the funds that overspent the budget amounts, um, and then we have to defray those with adding additional revenues. Um, most of them were for additional funds that came in to the fund in the form of some type of a grant. Um, project or additional revenues that we weren't expecting and so therefore we were able to spend additional monies. Um, there's a couple as in self-funded insurance that was claims that came in um, that were uh, in additional to what we had originally budgeted and so the total um, amount is 976,000 um, that we're requesting um, the budget amendment to be for. It's always good when you have unanticipated funds, revenues coming Revenues, in. revenues, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> With that, Mr. Chair, I move to approve resolution number 14, appropriating additional sums of money to defray expenses in excess of amounts budgeted for and appropriated by Fremont County, Colorado for the budget year ending December 31st, 2018. And that total amount is $976,000. Second. It has been moved with seconded to approve uh, resolution number 14. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, on to the next, which will be resolution number 15, authorizing the transfer of appropriated funds between various funds of Fremont County, Colorado, for the budget year ending December 31st, 2018. And again, I'll turn to Sonny. Yes, so each year we also have transfers that we do between funds. And so um, this resolution is just making a record of those transfers. And let me scroll down just a little bit. Um, so it's transfers that basically go out of one fund and into another. And so the list is shown up on the screens. The total transfers between funds were $5,467,142, um, of which Three million six or nine hundred thirty-nine thousand eight hundred fifty-two is the transfer from the general fund to the sheriff's fund. So that's the biggest portion of that. Um, we also have transfers that come out of the PILT fund um, and other departments. So those are listed on the screen. So that transfer to the sheriff's fund has been the same for quite a few years. Correct. Yeah. Okay. With that, Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we approve resolution number 15, authorizing the transfer of appropriated funds between the various funds of Fremont County, Colorado for the budget year ending December 31st, 2018, 5,467,142. Second. It has been moved to Senate to approve resolution 15, as read by Commissioner Payne. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Payne? Aye. Commissioner Bell? Aye. Commissioner McFall? Aye. Motion carries. All right, on to the last item on the agenda. We have approval of sponsorship of Colorado Department of Local Affairs Division of Housing Grant application for the Upper Arkansas Council of Governments for single family owner occupied housing rehabilitation program. Whew. We have a lot of here. You got <laughs> through it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So 
I'm here to request that you, Fremont County, act as the sponsor for this grant. We've been doing housing rehab since 1987, and Fremont County has been the sponsor the entire time. Um, this is a grant that I apply for through the Colorado Division of Housing. And um, so <laughs> this year requesting $120,000, and that is for the administration of the program, so to pay for the staff and the other administration costs. We, for the past few rounds, we have had enough funds to cover the cost of the rehab projects themselves. So we have program income that we collect from folks repaying their loans, and we have sufficient funds in order to keep loaning that money out. So we are just requesting administration funds. Okay. So, we, like I said, we've been operating this since 1987. Since 1989, when we started tracking this, We've made 350 loans. We've received funding from the Division of Housing for this program since 1991. Every year we rehab 16 units and we, we do this in six counties. So Fremont, Chafee, Custer, Lake, Park, and Teller. Um, the average loan amount is a little over $10,000. Uh, the last contract that we had, they actually awarded us a three-year contract. Prior to that, they were yearly contracts, and we're hoping again this time they will award us a three-year contract. That, that's so. pretty amazing, the amount of loans that you've done over the years. So, and it's, it's a good program to be available for people that qualify for those. Yes. All right. Anything Wishes? else? Sure, Mr. Chair, um, I move to approve the sponsorship of a Colorado Department of Local Affairs Division of Housing grant application for the Upper Arkansas Council of Governments for a single family owner occupied housing rehabilitation program. Second. It has been moved and seconded to approve of the sponsorship of the Colorado Department of Local Affairs Division of Housing grant application for the Upper Arkansas Area Council of Governments. Any other discussion? Just thank you for continuing this program. I think it means to a lot to a lot of people here in Fremont County, so we appreciate all your efforts. Thank you. And anybody that thinks they might be able to qualify for that, give you a call out at the COG and, yes, and, please. and make an appointment to see how that goes. Roll call, please. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Motion carries. Seeing no further business, we are adjourned.